if you're not waking up every single day in the first two, three years trying to uh, trying to convince yourself how to stay in this business, why to stay in this business, and not thinking about uh, quitting at least 30 times a week, you're not normal, you're not human, okay? And that's okay. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, first and foremost, Happy New Year. Um, if you're watching this broadcast, um, just know you're blessed, right? We Again, everybody wants different things in life and different aspirations, but the most basic thing in life is life, right? So if you're watching this broadcast, um, you are blessed. Count your blessings. It means you're alive, you're healthy, and that's already a great day. Everything else uh, is a cherry on top. So I want to wish everybody a very happy and healthy. Most important, I, I kind of... Uh, always drive that point home healthy uh, 2022 and beyond uh, obviously the last two weeks of the year uh, for my family we were all um, fighting COVID I'm pretty much now back to a hundred percent only my daughter somehow uh, became uh, immune to the damn thing I don't know how she didn't catch it uh, with all the sick in the house but thank God knock on wood again small little things small little blessings uh, and hopefully she'll never uh, she'll never uh, catch it. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, so everybody, uh, welcome to 2022. So far, so good. Uh, the bad news is you can see it from the kind of news point of all. And anybody who knows somebody probably is sick with COVID. Uh, this Omarion or Micron, whatever the hell it's called, is ridiculous. I think we had uh, at one day last week. I think we had close to a hundred thousand cases. Uh, for the day in New Jersey. Now, yes, we all get it. You're probably not going to die from it, but man, oh man, um, I'm double vaccinated. My wife, everybody in my house is double vaccinated. My wife even has the booster and we all caught it. So again, um, I don't think the, 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 the narrative anymore is if you're vaccinated, you're safe. Trust me, you're not. Um, I think the, the narrative now is, well, you're probably going to get it and hope to God you have a, a milder case. But I think that, you know, from what the government is telling us, you know, if you're vaxxed, you're safe. Trust me, you're not. I can have two weeks, very, very unpleasant. Uh, and the most important thing is stay alive and stay healthy. So let's talk about the market. So number one, for all you guys uh, who are trading for your first year, uh, for your first two years, congratulations, you made it another year. It, it's really a good thing. You, you know, you, in, in this business, uh, nobody wakes up as a trader, right? I, I'm doing this for going on my 23rd year Nobody wakes up and one day go, yeah, I want to become a trader. I think it's great. Okay, fantastic. Nobody does that. So everybody starts the same thing, the same way. And your 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 goal, uh, even though subconsciously you won't admit it to yourself, your goal for the first uh, three years or so is to just to make it to the next year. Try to um, really great, really grab as much positive data and positive uh, information you can have. And again, I've been saying this for years. With social media, it's very very tough because you have a lot of uh, inexperienced traders can trying to convince you they are experienced and they're only what three four months doing it longer than you and again the most important part uh, of being a new trader and starting your journey is uh, the human side of it and you know if if you haven't thought about you know quitting in your first two years 30 times a, a month you're not human okay everybody uh, before you has done that, okay? Everybody who's now trading 20, 25, 30 years has, been, has, has done it as well. So you're right on the track, right? You really are on the right track. So your first couple of years, you're trying to kind of find yourself to see uh, who you are, what type of personality you have based on uh, risk tolerance, uh, account size, lifestyle, all that good stuff that makes uh, you special, uh, you unique, and that's why the whole theory of emulating another trader and following another trader is is stupidity okay because that other trader is probably doing a lot longer than you or the lot trader has a different account size than you has different monthly bills than you so there's no way in god's green earth you can possibly emulate another trader that's where the personal experience comes in that's where the personal journey comes in this is where everybody develops on their own uh, on their own timeline and there is no finish line there is no trophies uh you know the only good thing about it is 
as you get more time in this business and you get more screen time, the screen time aspect is real. That is the one common denominator, no matter if you uh, are trading options or trading futures or trading Forex or like me, a uh, high beta technology, uh, we're all in kind of the same path of getting data. And the more times you see that data throughout the years, you're going to start, like we talked about in the last video, I think it was on Wednesday, you're gonna start omitting a lot of negative habits, right? A lot of negative habits, a lot of things that new traders, uh, more chances than not, are going to shoot themselves in the foot. And slowly but surely, like I said in, in, in Wednesday's video, you're not going to be a better trader every day, every year. Your goal is to become a less shittier one. And that's the common denominator behind all traders. But that's kind of the goal line, right? That's kind of the, the path that every single trader faces. And if you are in your first year going on to your second, I think that's fantastic. I think you should give yourself uh, a round of applause. Uh, you're probably still in that early stages, just trying to figure out the difference between a bid and an ask, but that's okay, right? You're still trying to figure out what type of trader you want to be, whether you're trading, a, again, uh, you know, the commodities market, you know, Forex, whatever it is, you know, whatever your drug of choice is, you're still trying to figure out your lane and your comfortability in that lane. And just be comfortable just to know that every trader has gone the same path as you, uh, nobody's special, right? Nobody's special. Uh, this business was basically created in the mid 90s. It's about 35, 40 years old, uh, realistically for people controlling their own finances. Yes, there's people been trading it from the 70s and the 60s and the 80s, but it's but it's very, very rare that number, someone started in the point and click system as we've seen and kind of know it now uh, before kind of the 93, 94, 95 area, which the Souls band had started. So we're, we're kind of 35 years into this thing. Um, nobody has uh, every answer in the world. We're still learning. Uh, even I'm going on my 23rd year, it's gonna be 23 years in May. Um, there's still a lot of things to fix, right? And there's a lot of things to fix, uh, but I will tell you this much, it gets a lot easier as time goes by because all the emotional baggage kind of starts leaving you year by year. Like, you know, you don't need to trade every single day. You know, you don't need to hop onto the hot stocks. And, you know, new traders are, are you know, are, are drawn into that uh, Times Square bright lights hot stock. Veteran traders, you know, we don't care about that. We don't care about the hot stock. The hot stock represents retail. Retail is the ones that are in the park. They're the pigeons. They're they're diving into uh, that that crumb that somebody throws in the park, and there's thirty thousand pigeons trying to crawl in that thumb. It doesn't work out well, okay. And slowly but surely, as time goes by, by you're going to be disconnected from the whole. Uh, is it Monday yet, or is it a new year yet, or is it uh, you know, or I have to trade today? Again, you don't have to trade. Just relax. It's all about longevity. It's all about your career. It's not about the dr the day. It's not about the trade. It's about your career. And if you are very, very serious about having a career in this business that's lasting one than 35 minutes, you're going to finally realize that, you know what, maybe today's my, not my day. Maybe tomorrow will give me a better hand to play. If I'm getting a 2-7 offsuit today, I don't have to play it, right? I know the market's open. I don't care about the market's open. The market's not giving you uh, the reason to trade. Value's giving you the trade. I've been saying this for years and years and years. And one day you're going to wake up, whether it's year two, year six, year eight, and finally realize that I don't need the FOMO, okay? I have the fo the JOMO, the joy of missing out. I'm okay, right? I don't need to trade. I don't have to trade. I'll wait for tomorrow for a better hand. And the most important part is, again, guys, like I said, if you're not waking up every single day in the first two, three years trying to, uh, trying to convince yourself how to stay in this business, why to stay in this business, and not thinking about uh, quitting at least 30 times a week, you're not normal. You're not human, okay? And that's okay. You'll be okay, okay, guys? You'll be all right. There is no uh, magic time that you're going to wake up one day and say to yourself, well, this is it. If I don't make it by this day, I don't deserve to be in this business. I don't need to be in this business. I'm not smart enough to be in this business. Take a deep breath, right? Take a deep breath. Um, if you're, you know, if you love social media, use social media after hours, okay? Technical analysis. For, for all you guys who are just watching this broadcast for the first time, it's all about technical analysis. All these little lines and all these little charts, they're telling you a story. Stocks, where they came from, where they, where they stopped, where they're possibly going is, and you don't need 20 people on social media to tell you their opinion about the stock. You can see it with your own eyes. It's either gonna go or it's not gonna go, and you're using data to make your determination technically if and when you need to allocate your money. If not, again, 
give it to somebody else, right? It's the Jomo. It's the joy of missing out. You're getting a clear path to the goal line. You're not getting the sexy one. You're not getting the sexy stock. As I've said for years and years and years, we're not looking, okay? I'm not looking to trade the hot stock. I'm looking for the chart that potentially can get hot. And that's the, the more important. So I want to wish everybody a happy and healthy and prosperous 2022. I hope all you guys who are in year one are getting to year two. For all you guys who are in five, are getting to year six and on and on and on. Eventually, you will be comfortable in your own skin. And the most important part is you will be where you want to be. So let's talk about the market. So we got our year-end rally. Pretty impressive numbers throughout the um, throughout the year. The Q's, you know, NASDAQ 100 was up 27%. Obviously a big deal. Uh, led by your favorite stocks, no matter what it is. You know, your Microsofts of the world and your Apples of the world and your NVIDIAs of the world and all that good stuff, right? Teslas of the world, all my favorite stocks. They're great, they love and they're awesome. Uh, you know, they're, you know, for all you guys who are watching this for the first time, I, I would say 90, 95% of all my trades are literally the same 10 stocks every single day. Um, so I don't get too creative. So I love these stocks, whether it's long, short, it doesn't make a difference as long as I can at least identify technically which way the wind is going to blow. And traditionally, the fourth quarter is was a very bullish uh, time, and it was, right? We had a really good uh, bullish run, and if you look at the cues, for, especially for the last uh, two weeks or so, again, we had a little bit of turbulence around the 50-day moving average, and we'll get to that and why it's important for a bunch of individual stocks coming into the morning. But you could see the importance of the 50-day moving average. What happens when you lose the 50-day moving average? You go into the next support zone. And what happens when you reclaim the 50-day moving average? You go on a big run. So that's kind of a big, big deal. And for all you new traders uh, going into this year, that 50-day is a monster line in the sand. Uh, if stocks break down below the 50-day, it usually starts a sequence of pretty aggressive selling into the next rising demand zone. And if stocks reclaim the 50-day uh, on the close, it starts a really aggressive cycle back to the upside. And just keep that in mind when we start talking about uh, some individual names in, in a few minutes. But that's kind of where we are. And traditionally, that first quarter is very, very bullish, right? Everybody, uh, even if you're a brand new trader, you've heard the word uh, January effect. Usually, that is the time where a lot of speculation money, not necessarily even small cap names, uh, which I don't trade. I, I, I would trade, I think I trade small caps. I, I think if I had 10 small cap trades this year, it was all driven on option flow. Okay, so I'm, I'm not really a big uh, uh, small cap trader, but traditionally that January effect is kind of a big deal for small caps, but not only for small caps, for anything uh, that is set to be attached to speculation money. So because uh, brand new funds are allocating, right? All these pension funds, index funds, mutual funds, uh, hedge funds, even individual investors, they're allocating speculation money to the start of the year. They're expecting uh, that investment throughout the year to, uh, to, uh, to be very, very fruitful. So traditionally, it's a very, very important uh, part of the year. And th th there's, a, there's an old adage that says the first two weeks of the year, how they go will probably have the rest of the year to follow. I, I think it's an old wives tale. Um, I, I don't believe in that because if you guys remember, I think it was 2018, we had a horrific fourth quarter and we had a horrific start uh, to the year of 2019. And after that first month, month and a half or so, we had a really, really aggressive market. So don't listen to a lot of media outlets telling you, well, it's very important in the first week. If we don't rally that first week, well, well, hell, this market's going to zero. It's going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah, not so fast, okay? There's a lot of uh, old wives tales uh, in this market. Remember, nothing needs to happen, right? Nothing needs to happen. Nothing has to happen. What's happening is the day-to-day -day and how much data you are formulating uh, into your opinion. So let's talk about where we are. Forget about what we've been, okay? If you, whatever you've accomplished uh, in year uh, 2021, it's behind you right now. Whether you had a great year, subpar year, or you're just learning, just trying to get your feet wet, it's behind you, right? Good part about it is it's going on your uh, mental Rolodex. All those experiences you've seen and you've been okay with, right? You're taking it and you're spilling it over all that experience uh, into the following year. But the most important part is where we are going into the first week of 2022. So let's talk about this. So NASDAQ had a really good run, and especially the market in itself, just had a really, really good run the last uh, you know, week and a half, two weeks or so uh, from bouncing and reclaiming uh, the 50-day moving average. You can see here why it was so important to when the 
50 day got lost, it got traded down to the next support zone. And that, again, keep that in mind before we talk about some individual names. But to the credit of the NASDAQ and to a lot of indexes in itself, uh, we got a remount, a good remount off the 50 day moving average and started a really good five day run. And for the last couple of days, we lost a little bit of steam. Now, uh, the playing devil's advocate, if you guys remember, in the last couple of days going into Thanksgiving, that Wednesday, right, Thursday we were closed for Thanksgiving, and that Friday we had a pretty aggressive sell-off. And the question was going into that Monday, well, what was going to happen next? Are the bulls going to just roll over and die? The bears going to take over? And the question was answered very, very quickly uh, that Monday. If you guys remember that Friday, we lost like eight, 900 Dow points. And the next day on Monday, we got back five, 600 points right away because again, predominantly players return. Because remember, there's nobody around the last two days of the year. There's really not. You can see the action uh, from, from last week. There was nobody around. So the question is, was that a true market? Was that a true representation of them selling Amazon, uh, them selling, uh, starting to selling back Apple, starting to selling back Microsoft at the really, really big runs, uh, selling Amazon. Amazon never participated in the rally. As much as we saw really good aggressive call buying for very short-term expiration on Amazon, it never played out that way. Uh, Tesla, I believe Tesla's coming out with some China numbers over the weekend. If they haven't come out already, I apologize. I just have not looked at uh, any news at, at all this weekend. Um, but more important was, well, you know, what's Tesla going to do, right? What's Tesla going to do? It's, it's held now the 50-day moving average twice. What is it going to do? What is NVIDIA going to do? These are, these are the leaders of the past year. What are these stocks going to do the first year, uh, first week of the new year? And obviously, that is to be determined. We will see what happens on Monday. But the most important part is kind of getting ready, right? Get, kind of getting ready mentally, taking a deep breath. And, and for all you guys who are brand new to trading, the first two, three years, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a really, really important piece of advice. A lot of you guys, if you did go out on New Year's Eve, you probably went out with a lot of your buddies. And, you know, I've done the same thing, okay, all the way back then, like 99 and stuff like that. I've done exactly the same thing. We're going to kill it, man. You know, the liquor starts getting into your system. Again, I don't drink. By the way, I got destroyed on New Year's Eve. Not through alcohol. I don't drink. I ate more sushi than the human body can handle. I'm still going through uh, sushi withdrawal, but that's not here nor there. So, you know, you know the drill, right? You're in a nightclub. You're in, and hopefully you guys are safe. Uh, you're in a nightclub. You're in a bar, and you're sitting with your trading buddies. Uh, two, three years that you're, you're, we're going to kill it, man. This is our year. And then you realize come Monday morning, you're doing exactly the same thing that you've done the previous year that's gotten you nowhere. And that's a very, very uh, depressing uh, first week for you. And then you just realize that you haven't changed anything. You haven't really omitted uh, any bad habits. You haven't formulated any new opinions. Technical analysis kind of going to the wayside. You're still looking for the hot stock of the day. And the only thing that's changed is the date on the calendar. And that's a very, very depressing uh, point of view when you when you turn off your computer at four o'clock that day and realize nothing has changed and that becomes very very impressive for all you guys who are brand new in trading let me just give you a, a great piece of advice monday is is an ordinary trading day okay it literally is there's no difference between uh this monday or last wednesday or two thursdays ago it's exactly the same thing okay it's not about the calendar day it's not about quote unquote i'm going to kill it this year it's all about me learning this year me me getting better this year getting more practical omitting bad habits this year and if you haven't done that if you haven't seen that progression throughout 2021 well what makes you think come monday morning anything's gonna be different so take a step take, take a step back right it's all about value it's all about your preparation and research going into the new week and make Making sure you are prepared, that you are not uh, you're, you're not faced with any uh, unexpected things, and that's where again technical analysis takes place. So where are we, right? So where are we? So here's kind of where we are. Okay, so the Nasdaq 100, the Qs, we close now below the five-day moving average. Again, if you've been watching this broadcast or very very uh, new to trading or very very new to this broadcast, uh, you kind of well know or maybe not know. But the five-day moving average is, at least for me, uh, the most important shortest-term sentiment. It really does show you uh, who has control of the next trading day, right? It's not a, it's not a elongated uh, opinion of what's going to happen three months from now or three weeks from now. It's basically what, what probably could happen the next day. 
And you can see here how we closed not only below the five day moving average, but what we closed below this rising linear regression line. As you can see, there's been a really, really big battle line uh, throughout the last uh, couple months or so. And if you believe in the theory, again, that stocks trade from supply to supply, well, stocks trade from demand to demand. And the next level of demand is the 10 day moving average, which becomes the birth of the trade. If it, you know, birth of the trade to the upside, that means it's become the birth of the trade to the downside. And if you look at a lot of names that are in the NASDAQ 100, again, some of the biggest uh, players out there, you kind of see the same thing. Apple closed uh, below the five day moving average, uh, Microsoft, uh, closed below the five-day moving average. Facebook, right? Facebook closed below the five-day moving average. Names like Amazon never rallied, right? Absolutely never rallied. It was a pretty good, uh, pretty good aggressive pivot on Friday uh, off that 33.70 level. It got into the 33.30s, and you can see here now it's all the way right close to this bottom of the range here. And we're not talking about the five-day moving average on Amazon. It's been below the 50-day moving average now uh, for you know for quite a while here. It's been for you know for about two weeks now. So if we start taking out the bottom of the range here uh, on Amazon that never rallied with everything else, well, that's a bit, very very big problem. And then you start looking at names like a Tesla, right? That is the stock has been a godsend. It really has been on the long side, on the short side, uh, and this week has been some phenomenal phenomenal bounces. Um, on, on Tesla from the five day, from the 50. But now we're at the level that it's hugging the 50 day moving average. And again, as you can see here, the 50 day moving average is a big deal. When it lost its 50 day moving average right over here, it started two weeks worth of selling. And when it reclaimed the 50 day moving average, it had really two, three days big of, of buying before it hit the, the upper linear regression line. So now we're sitting at the 50 day moving average on Tesla. I'm guessing depending on the data, and I'm unless I'm completely messed up in, the, in my brain and the sushi overload, I thought there was some data coming out this weekend, uh, some sort of data from China. Let's just pretend it doesn't, and uh, then everybody knows I'm, I'm already out of my mind. But let's just pretend from face value. It's touched now the 50 day moving average now two days in a row. This is a definitive line in the sand. Uh, if we close below the 50 day moving average on Tesla and you believe in the theories of technical analysis, well, here is two weeks worth of selling uh, below the 50 day moving average. If we open below the 50 day moving average and reclaim it, then obviously any close above the 50 day moving average, the bull thesis is still in place. So this is definitely one uh, that I am watching for Monday. Um, I'm going to watch that 50 day moving average. If the bears start taking control, you know, we got a pretty good scenario back to the downside. If the bulls hold and start taking out the previous channels high, then obviously the 50 day moving average is your max pain stop if you get long uh, above the 50 day uh, remount. Same thing with the video, right? Same thing with the video. You see here how it stopped right at the 50 day moving average on, on, on uh, Friday. That will be a huge battleground. If we can test that 50 day and the bulls hold and they trap uh, very, very eager uh, late shorts, then yeah, we could squeeze right back up. But if we violate this 50 day moving average on NVIDIA, and we start really building below that opening range lows, then you're talking about an initial eight to 10 points. And then obviously any close over 86 goes all the way back down to the next demand zone, uh, all the way down into the 270s that we saw uh, this third week of December. So it's gonna be very, very important. Uh, also take names, for example, uh, like the Bitcoin related names, right? Bitcoin uh, has been a little bit of a, of, a, of a downturn. Again, I'm not a big crypto guy, but you know, I kind of know what's going on, 47,000 in Bitcoin. Uh, well, look at the derivatives, right? Look at the derivatives of, of Bitcoin. You got names like a Coinbase, right? Like a Coinbase has been, well, had this big, big run up with Bitcoin, and then it's kind of gone uh, mirroring Bitcoin's performance. And you can see here on, on, on Coinbase, you have three days in a row on the bottom channel. If you look at the 60 minute support, 60 minute support, look how tight it's getting on this Bollinger Band. This Bollinger Band gets lost and this daily channel gets violated, right? You have room all the way back down to the bottom of the channel. Even names, for example, like Amara, right? Like, like Amara, that's again, kind of a, a Bitcoin derivative. Same thing, had this big, big run up on Bitcoin, kind of went big down. And now it's just trying to hold on to this linear, daily linear regression line that it's tested five days in a row. As you can see here, first close on Friday below this linear regression line. If this thing confirms opening range lows, look how much room you have, right? Same thing with a name like, uh, like Araya. 
right? Same thing like the riots, holding this bottom of the range here. It's sitting here, uh, two, one, two, three, four, five times defended this linear regression line. This linear channel falls and Bitcoin continues to fall. It's going to fall right with it. So there's definitely themes playing out here that at least the first day of the week. Again, nobody's trying to predict prices. The market goes up, the market goes down. Who the hell knows where we're going to be, right? We have rising cases. Is the market going to engulf this bad news and continue to kind of live with this whole COVID theme for the rest of our lives? Maybe so, maybe not. We don't know, right? We're not in the prediction business. We're not in the guessing business. I don't know where these stocks are going to close at four o'clock. All we can do is prepare to where they potentially can go. So even take names, uh, even the uh, hotel names, casino names, like look at a name like Wynn, right? Look at a name like Wynn that, again, obviously if, if COVID is on the rise and again, you know, and you absolutely... Uh, need the book of a vacation and then you're thinking about twice obviously the casinos obviously the the cruise ships are going to have a lot of better problems and look at when when is just sitting on the bottom channel here on the 10 and 20 day cross if when starts losing this channel here look how much room you have down to the downside so there, there's a lot of value potentially going to the downside opening this week are there names that i that i like to the upside that look pretty good yeah there are you know look at starbucks right look at starbucks um you know it had a really really big big move from the bottom. Um, I would like this thing to kind of go sideways maybe for a couple of days, but you can see here the top of the channel here, it's got rejected off the same price three times. A name like Rivian, um, n name like Rivian. Again, do I love it? No, I don't love it. It's not something that I'm dying to trade, but if the market get, does get good, you can see the top of the channel here. If this thing gets violated, maybe this thing could wake up, right? Maybe a name like RBLX, if the market gets going, right? Maybe starts reclaiming this top of the channel as well. But I don't love these stocks, right? That's the thing. I don't love these stocks. I'm seeing there's a lot more value if we could confirm to the downside. Obviously, um, I would love to see us rally every single day. Everybody feels better on, on a bull market. Everybody feels taller and prettier and more handsome, right? Food tastes be better, air tastes, uh, smells uh, fresher. But the point is the stock market goes up, the stock market goes down. As much as I prefer a bull market, I have no problem trading to the downside. Uh, as we all know that old adage, staircase up, elevated down, stocks go down very, very aggressively. Uh, very, very fast. And again, like I said, for, for many, many years, God gave you two hands, two, two ears, two eyes. You could trade both sides of the market. Uh, and as you get deeper into this business and you get much more comfortable, you'll realize you're not a bad person, okay? You're not a bad person uh, for wanting to short stocks when the sentiment is telling you it's a sell bias. And you're equally not a bad person when you're looking to buy stocks that somebody thinks uh, the company sucks right? Social media things. It sucks, sucks, man. Okay. Okay. Whatever. So price action is the most important part. Remember, our opinions don't mean anything. It's all about collecting data. And the most important part is making it to the next year. So guys, I want to wish everybody a very happy and healthy uh, 2022. Um, I hope you guys develop. I hope you guys develop uh, in a pace that you feel comfortable. And the most important part is of any type of flow in this business is actually staying in business. Guys, God bless. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful 2022. And may God continue to bless you and your family. Take care, guys.